Welcome, SFL Nation, to NordVPN Stadium in San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo City Artillery. Sitting at 5-5 five and five in Week 13 of the Simulation Football League, they are welcoming in the Mexico City Aztecs, also sitting at 5-5. Five and five. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Eric Vincent alongside Alex West for the penultimate week in the Simulation Football League just before we hit the playoff time. And it is down to the nitty gritty. Both these teams sitting at five and five, both trying to get the inside track. Alex, what's your take on both these teams? Well, truly, it is a question of who can win out here. Both of these teams want to see the playoffs, but true, but the path to the playoffs goes through each other. You need seven wins to clinch a playoff spot if you're either of these teams. Just winning is not enough. That just puts you as part of the ladies in waiting, if you will, of the teams that are all in a seething cauldron of six and five. So just winning here is not enough, but this is what you have to win if you want to keep your playoff hopes alive. And it looks like the hometown artillery are going to get the football to start this game off. Ron Haynes and Luke Schreiner are in the stats truck for us this evening as well. It is a beautiful evening here in the heart of Texas, and we are ready to go. Fielded from about the center of his own end zone. It will be brought out to about the 25-yard line. Mark it down at the 24. Yayo yeah, Montana with the return. And we will see Ace Fennick come out and lead the troops. And none other than Ace Fennick. Something to talk about. He is one of an exclusive club. Only a handful of quarterbacks actually have a positive, not even a positive touchdown interception ratio. He is one of them, one of only four, and he leads the league in completion percentage. Artillery starting off with an offset eye, three wide. Bennett going to roll out and pass to start things off. Throws it across his body. Wide open man. Garrison Blue out across midfield and down at the 45-yard line. What a play to start things off for the artillery. And we knew they're an air attack team, but right away, happy to take a deep shot. The big man, Garrison Blue, that security blanket is behind the linebackers, behind the safety, and is just all alone. Ace Fennec sees his man, hits him in stride. And now they're just up across midfield already. Huge play of about 30 yards just right out the gate, and they are already in Mexico City territory. Offset eye once again for Fennec. He will throw once again. Over the middle, catch is made. Montana, another first down. Two plays, two first downs for the artillery. Good start. And you couldn't ask for much more uh, just with how well it's moving. You just kind of got to wait and see what's next. Ace Fennec living up to his excellent performance so far this season. And Diego Montana doing everything you want from a receiver who is having to run straight into the teeth of the defense there. That's Dexter Jackson, one of the hardest hitters in the league waiting for him there. So another gain of about 15 yards on that last place. That's a first down. Toss goes to Jones, trying to find a little bit of running room and gets stood up after a short gain of a couple. We'll get a look at the artillery offense quickly. Fennec at quarterback. We saw Brad Jones there. Rainstorm, the other running back. Kenny Hendricks, Ziggy Roenick, Diego Montana, and Vin Cali out of the receivers. Garrison Blue, Hank Earl Troll, the tight ends. Jamarcus Candy, David Parker, Yogi Barr, Charles Michael, and Jukin Rukin along the offensive line as Garrison Blue gets another catch for a short gain, the third and manageable for the artillery. And something that I like about that pass and something that Ace has shown that he is uh, the man to do is he is willing to be patient and he's willing to take what the defense gives him and he's willing to take the check down routes if, if his man is open. Fennec on third down. Good pocket. Catch is made. Another first down. Vin Calia, the former Minnesota legend, with his first catch on the evening. And that's another artillery first down. And now they've moved the chains inside the red zone, and they are very successful at punching the ball in, or at the very least, getting points 
from their red zone trips. So let's see if they can keep up their uh, success so far here. Bennett going to roll out. Good blocking up front. Throws a pick. Going back the other way are the Aztecs. Maurice Lloyd with the interception, trying to find some room and makes it out to the 30-yard line of Mexico City. A huge turnover there for the Aztecs. And that's a very dangerous pass to be trying to make. You're in a short yardage situation. It's a much shorter field. You've got guys that are playing coverage. And that's just an incredibly athletic play by the big man who skies to go and snag that one. That's not even Mexico City's best pass interceptor. Maurice Lloyd is an outside linebacker. She just did an exceptional job there. So a clutch play right when her team needed it. Lloyd with the takeaway allows the Aztecs to set up shop right around the 30-yard line. Delayed handoff goes to Bentley, the Hall of Famer. He'll get a couple on the play, and that sets up second down. We'll get a look at the Aztecs on offense. Jordan Seip manning the helmet quarterback. Jacob Morrison, Ray Bentley, the Hall of Famer of the running backs. Buford Van Dam at fullback. Jason Bartley, Doug Spelling, knowing Tarasas are the wide receivers. Bill Henry and Devontae Richardson are the tight ends. Ova Yanda, Silatmiana Osilodal, and Tlodohani Supremo are all on the offensive line. Dags is going to laugh at me for that one. Bentley getting a toss out of the backfield for a short gain of a couple. And this is exactly the kind of uh, defensive performance I expect by both squads, honestly. That's a very tough couple of plays, very big hits that Alamo City is levying on these Mexico City Aztecs. This is a team, this is a matchup of no love lost. Third and five, single back, Sipe, pump fakes, pressure coverage backside, he's gonna go down. Slung down at the 30 yard line, fourth and long. Alamo City gets the stop thanks to Stephen Fellows the second. An interception by the Mexico City defense that does deny Alamo City points ends up going nowhere because of a stout Alamo City defensive stand to force a quick three and out. What a no net yards on this drive. So that sets up a punt, K.O. Barrett Jr. Season 21 All-Star, he will put the foot into the leather. And a good punt there, all the way back to the 20-yard line. Good return here, though. Right up the middle of the field, breaking tackles is Kenny Hendricks, and he'll make it all the way out to the 38-yard line of Alamo City. So good starting field position for the artillery. We'll see if they can perform a little bit better in the red zone this time around. For sure. It's really just about Ace Finnick is going to have to clear his mind, forget about what the last pass he threw was. There's only one incompletion for him on the day. So, yeah, it's an ugly one. But if that's uh, if that's the only day, the only kind of incompletion that he throws today, he'll be happy with that. Fresh set of downs, eye formation for the artillery. Another rollout for Fennec. Throws across his body, was looking for that same basic route that he threw to Garrison Blue on the first possession. Instead, he finds Vin Calia, and it's still a first down. And let's just watch this uh, hit that is delivered by the defender here. That is, uh, that's Gerard Brody, who does an excellent job making an open field tackle and sticking to Vin Calia as soon as that ball is arriving. A good job by Calia holding on to the football there. First down for the artillery. Fennec going to throw again. Wide open man. Right at the sticks is Montana. And they're going to mark him just a yard short. It's going to be second and one. And that's just a beautiful comeback route. And the receiver finding his spot that he plants, he plants his feet, spins around, finds himself in the soft spot in the zone. There's no defender even within five yards of him. Ace Finnick is going to find his open men. Offset eye. Handoff this time goes to Montana. Montana lining up in the backfield, and he's going to get first down yardage off the carry. And look at that. A little bit of uh, multi-talented uh, work by Yale Montana, relying on uh, an extra 
just an extra, extra halfback, you want to give Rainstorm a spell or two. Fennec going to toss it out to Jones. Voids the first defender and gets past the 30-yard line to about the 28. Going to be second and four for Alamo City. Handoff. This time goes to Fronick, who lines up in the backfield. He doesn't go much of anywhere. And that stop was made by Dexter Jackson. And we'll get a look at the Mexico City defense here quickly. Uh, Evan Miller, Skyler Kingsley, Dan Tritz, A.K. Jones along the front four. Dexter Jackson, John Osiris, Maurice Lloyd, the backers. Gerard Brody, Liam Ryan, Merrick Itera, the corners. Jeffrey Daggs, Ben Charbs, and Max Jackson are the safeties rounding out the secondary for the Aztecs. Third and three. Fennec to throw over the middle, and it catch, the catch can't be made by Kalia, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And that's an absolute heartbreaker of an incompletion to have there, but honestly, it's one of those things where at least they're going to have a chance to put some points on the board and take a lead here. So that sets up Matt Fennec from about 45 yards to get the first points on the board. Good snap, kick is up, it is away, and it is through. Alamo City takes an early three to nothing lead here at home. And the home crowd is getting behind, the, getting behind their squad. They are very happy to see a lead after what they felt should have been almost surefire points on the last drive kind of fizzled out because of an incredibly clutch play. At least this time they were able to take a lead. Mexico City, the onus is now on you to respond. They were forced into a quick three and out. Let's see if their offense is able to manage more. So Mexico City with their first kick return of the game. Short kick fielded at about the five yard line, bouncing at near sideline and stopped at about the 36. First possession was uh, due to a turnover deep in the red zone for Mexico City. So we'll see Jordan Sipe and the troops come out for their second possession of the opening quarter. And uh, th their offense definitely stalled a little bit there to start things off, Alex. It definitely felt almost like Alamo City had a sense of what plays Mexico City likes to open their drives with and had something cooked up because that was just absolutely ruthless work by the whole unit. Three and out on the opening possession. We'll see what Sype has in store for us on this one. Play action. Checks it down to Bentley. Rumbling out of the backfield. Bounces it out and out of bounds for a gain of seven. Good run there by the Hall of Famer. Biggest positive play of the day for Mexico City, and that sets up a nice short second down. These are the kind of play action screen pass it looked like. It's a little bit of a little bit of a spicy play that turns out well for them. We've seen some wrinkles so far with both of these teams. Uh, receivers lining up in the backfield for Alamo City, a little play action screen for the Aztecs as Bentley gets the carry this time. He'll get credit for about a yard and a half, brings up third and very short. Bit of a questionable spot there, but it's not one worth throwing the flag over, I think. It's still a little bit of north and south running. So you could say he got enough forward progress and just got hit really hard to shorten that up, make it look like he didn't make it so far, but short. So that brings out the big hefties here on third and short. Handoff goes back to Bentley. He's got the first down and more, and he'll drag defenders close to midfield. But it's going to be a first down nonetheless for Mexico City. And what a push by the front by the front line and the extras by Alamos or by, by Mexico City. That's some big back activity. Sype gonna roll out, throws quickly, finds Henry over the middle, and that's a first down for the Aztecs. Quick decision making there for Sype. 
and we've seen hit a little bit of a mixed bag from him when it comes to the mixed, uh, excuse me, the quick decision making. There have been some questionable moments, but it does feel like he's kind of started to round into form as the second half of the season has developed. And that was definitely one of those quick hitter timing routes. He saw the first read and it was there. It was a little questionable, but it was there. His man had a step. Back to Bentley again, who gets stoned right at the line of scrimmage. Alex, you want to introduce the defense for Alamo City here quickly? Oh, I'd love to. Alamo City's defense is led by defensive ends Stephen Fellows II and Robert Thump. Tackles Dina Begin Ju and Jubu McSlim. Inside linebackers Zach Benjamin and Jay Mart. Outside it's Boogie Barr and Rob Foraker. As Henry makes a one-handed catch there over the middle as he was getting hit. That was a huge play. Sorry to cut you off there, man, but man, that, that was a great play there. Let's go ahead and see that replay. For sure. And not only is that a big gainer up the seam, but what a smash by Rain Rowe, who's the free safety waiting there at the end of the lane to just deliver a deliver a teeth rattler. And that's the a other... nice hands catch brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it, SFL 4K23. Sipe throws over the middle, catches made, running head start there, gets inside the SFL red zone, inside the 20 to about maybe the 18-yard line. And that was one of the corners. That's Bo Martin Jr. who is having to make a play on that one. And man coverage comes and runs behind. Look at that pursuit on that one. The rest of the corners behind Bo Martin Jr. We've got Mickey McGuire, Ron Hoff, Michaela Foraker, Jukin Ro Roken Jr. And the other safeties, we've got Willie Bands and Albert Begin. And that is your Alamo City defense. Thank you, Alex. First and 10, officially from the 16-yard line. Getting us towards the end of the opening frame. Sipe in trouble, but finds an open man. That's Buford Van Dam, and he's going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Aztecs. Al Alamo City's zone defensive schemes, or it looks like maybe the occasional man-to-man, -man, the way they've been lining up has left them soft over the middle. Mexico City saw these gaps, saw these opportunities, and Jordan Sype got in rhythm to deliver such a drive, he finds the fullback to go to go and punch that in. The last year, the all-star, only three years with the team, but what an impact there that he is having on this clubhouse. Extra point is up and through Mexico City with a 7-3 lead now after the catch made by Buford Van Dam to get them into the end zone. And if you are new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. And a touchback on the uh, ensuing kickoff after the touchdown play. And uh, man, that, that was a good that was a good drive by Mexico City. A good answer there. Exactly what the doctor ordered, right? And that's the first touchdown, whether by whether by land or by air for for uh, Buford Van Dam so far this season. So with 27 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter, Alamo City setting up shop at the 20. Oh, and Finnick rolls out of the pocket right into the defender. He got absolutely stoned by John Osiris. Unlocked, coming off the strong side. Oh, John Osiris just sees a straight line path practically. Just kind of you, you go straight and then you turn, and then he's right there, just as easy as can be. Talk about getting your bell rung. Benick looks okay. He's going to drop off over to Jones to round out the first quarter of play. It's still going to be a third and very long for Alamo City, but one quarter is in the books. Mexico City looking like they're seizing some momentum here on the road, up 7-3 to three against Alamo City. You're watching the Simulation Football League, presented by APM Music. We are live on YouTube. Hey, 
Eric Vincent alongside Alex West. Ron Haynes and Luke Schreiner in the stat truck for us this evening. Week 13 of the Simulation Football League. Both these teams sitting at 5-5, five and five, trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Big third down for Alamo City here. All eyes on Ace Fennec. Third and 12. Empty set for Fennec. Good pocket. Going to fire it. And it's caught amidst several different Aztec defenders. The catch is made by Hendricks. And that's going to be a fresh set of downs for the artillery. It's hard for me to say whether that was a more impressive pass by Ace Fennec or whether that was just an incredible read and a route run by Kenny Hendrick, who was in where exactly where he needed to be. But Ace Fennec fits that pass inside a thermos. There was no room for error. Mike Daggs is absolutely beside himself in the chat, literally sitting next to himself. Galia going in motion, eye formation for the artillery. Cosplay goes to Storm, who doesn't get out of the backfield. First carry for Rain Storm, and it's going to be a loss on the play. You know, something that I think that we're seeing here is uh, I'm really impressed bo with both uh, Mexico City's pass defense and with how well Alma City overall has still been able to move the ball through the air despite facing one of the better pass defending clubs. This is Goliath versus Goliath here. Fennec again oh! is going to get buried. That rollout play has worked out great for them in the first quarter of play, but man, ever since the second quarter started, Mexico City has that sniffed out. Mexico City has certainly made a big adjustment, and that adjustment is to send pressure on the outside. We see that the they're able to just push beyond the tackles and get men home. Matt Walters with the tackle there on the outside. Just a rotational defensive end in the, the formation there and gets a huge sack for the Aztecs setting up third and very, very long for Alamo City. Fennec checks it down over the middle, catches May, but it's gonna be well short of the line to gain, and they are going to have to punt. It definitely felt like one of those moments where most of the routes were going down the field and they were all covered. Ace only had one option, and that was the check down route where you gotta hope that your man is able to make the defender that's blanketed on him miss or shuck that tackle and get some yards after the catch but great job by the defense there solo tackle in the open field and the rest of the the receivers that were trying to get past the first down marker were completely covered danny dimes trying to pin the aztecs back deep but it will bounce into the end zone for a touchback Seven to three, seven forty-four to go here in the second quarter of play. And if you're liking that game so far, you smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel right now if you haven't already. The SFL produces over 400 events a year. There is no one else that gives you more football. Don't miss a minute of SFL or SFLM action, and keep helping this channel grow through your support. And Sipe is going to go down. We've seen our fair share of quarterback sacks to start things off here in the opening half of play as Sipe goes down for a three-yard loss. We sure have, and that's Robert Thump's sixth sack on the season. Now, finally, the sole leader of the sack total for the Alamo City defense. Tina Begin is right behind him at five and a half, but this is just an all-around uh, tour de force by both defensive units. We expected more points here. Side going to roll out. Pressure coming in his face. He finds Henry. Just past the defense for a first down. No. Oh, Jordan no. Sipe is injured. Oh, that is terrible news for the Aztecs as he, as he looks like he is in some pain. And now you just know that the away fans that made the trip out here are all holding their breath, and so is the rest of the offense. It's not that we haven't seen backup quarterbacks win games this season. We certainly have. We've seen them perform excellently, but this is a do-or-die game, and you've got to think they definitely want him number one under center. So that brings in Larry Love, number two. In relief for the injured Sipe. We'll keep you updated on Sipe's status 
as we move forward throughout the evening. Love is going to throw and one-handed catch to start things off. What a play by Jason Bartley. And that is one of those that you have to know the hit is coming. That's a one-handed grab, I think. Was that a Retroid Nice Hands catch of the game? Uh, that was probably our second one, honestly. <laughs> Second and one, handoff goes to the Hall of Famer, Bentley lowers his shoulder, gets the first down yardage, and that'll move the sticks for the Aztecs. You know, Ray Bentley is just an incredible player overall. You would expect from someone who is a Hall of Famer to, or you would expect from someone who is a all-star, uh, multi-time all-star, MVP, player of the year, to be excellent, but he's just multi-dimensional. Handoff this time goes to Jacob Morrison, the other running back in that tandem for Mexico City. He'll get a couple, and that brings up second down. And it is a good tandem that he's paired with. You know, Ray is fast. He's shifty. He's able to catch passes out of the backfield. So Jacob Morrison serves as a nice, big, physical back brace 5'11", but Jacob's 6'3". Offset eye for the Aztecs. Love over the middle, tipped and incomplete. Henry couldn't hang on, and that brings up third down. And that is one of those that you just think to yourself, ah, oh, Jordan Side probably makes that throw because that's one where Larry Love just led, uh, led Bill Henry by a bit too much. That throw wasn't exactly where it needed to be. If that throw is in between the numbers, that's an easy catch. Instead, it brings up third and long, four wide, single back. Love, blitz coming, throws it over the middle, Terrazas with a running start, and he'll get the first down out of out to the 40-yard line, and we will toss it over to SFL HQ for a game break. Kamish, what you got? Thank you, Eric. Arizona hosting Houston tonight. TJ Punk, after Houston took the opening drive for a score, goes all the way for a touchdown. It's Arizona's only touchdown of the night right now. Houston leads the Scorpions 14-10 in the third. If Houston wins, they're in the playoffs. If Arizona loses, they're out. Back to you. Thank you, Cameron Irvine. As love is going to get dragged down to the dirt. I believe that's our fifth sack overall of the game and the third for Alamo City as they get to Larry Love. And that's just an excellent effort by, that's not just one that's not just one player making an effort there. That's two that are that it took to actually wrap up Larry Love. Jubu McSlim actually getting credit for the sack there. And more pressure being sent. Love's going to go down right at the midfield stripe. He went unblocked. What an absolute monster play by Boogie Barr. And the Alamo City defense has come alive in the biggest possible way. They can sense the weakness that is, ha that is starting to creep into the Mexico City offense. They definitely are feeling the loss of Jordan Sype here. It's not that that would have been any easier, but I think maybe he throws that ball away. The artillery are smelling the blood in the water and going after Jordan Sype's backup, Larry Love here, setting up a third and country mile from about the midfield stripe. Love unloads one. Terrazas with the catch. And he pays for it on the other end. He'll get close to the yard to gain, but that's going to be fourth down. And this is going to be a big decision for the Mexico City for the Mexico City uh, coaching staff. Do you try this field goal? Do you trot out Chaz Blackwater, or do you? Oh, looks like they're going for the punt here with Kale Barrett Jr. Yeah, it, it's a tough call. You're kind of in no man's land. Might as well pin them back deep, and that's what it looks like they're going to try and do as the ball is going to bounce inside the 20. Big oh. bounce there for Mexico City, but it stops on a dime. Oh, my goodness, what a punt there by K.O. Barrett Jr. as they stop it right at the one-yard line. What a punt. Talk about your, the luckiest bounce that you could ever see a ball take. Go buy a lotto ticket, K.O. Bear. That's a, that's a magical foot you got there. And now watch and see if Mexico City sends the pressure here. I know I would. They're going to send it. Handoff goes to Jones. He gets out of his own backfield, but not by much. He'll get a couple on the play. Brings up second down. 
it was a very interesting thing. It looked like they were showing blitz. They had a couple of linebackers creep up there, but when the ball was snapped, they hesitated a little bit. They were waiting to see if it was a if it was a play action. As soon as the ball actually moved, they all converged on it. Great effort by the ACA to get the yards up. And off goes to Kronick, who lines up in the backfield. He'll get a couple, and it brings up third and five. And honestly, to get two positive yards like that, all you want for this third down, you accept that it's a three-down situation. You need to get some short gains just to get your quarterback some breathing room for this play here. Watch out for this rollout play, though. They brought it out in the offset. Instead, they're going to hand it off to Jones, who gets buried in the backfield. Mexico City does their job and forces the three and out deep in Alamo City territory. And I feel like it's one of those things, A.K. Jones there is the one who's most flowed towards the actual way they were trying to run the ball. Mexico City sent a little pressure to try and pressure the quarterback, but Alamo City trying to catch them off guard ends up calling a run play straight into the blitz. Dimes with the quick punt gets it away, but a great return here for Mexico City as they bring it all the way out to the Alamo City 31 yard line. Great starting field position off of the Jacob Morrison return. The former Las Vegas uh, halfback just showing how fast he really can be in the open field when he's got a step or two to build some momentum. He's not just a power back. He does have some get up and go. Jordan Sipes still knocked out of the game. Haven't received any update from the sidelines yet as to his status. So Larry Love still in at quarterback for the Aztecs. Terrazas goes in motion. Alamo City looking like they're going to send some heat. And they do. Love sets his feet, fires Terrazas with the catch inside the SFL red zone and a first down for Mexico City. And that's just an outstanding read by Larry Love there, who's able to see that Noitrazis is just breaking behind the zone coverage there as he throws that. See that right there. You've got two Alamo City defenders who are theoretically in the area, but they're playing zone. They're not directly covering or trying to stop that beeline between, uh, between Love and Terrazas. High formation, handoff goes to Bentley, lowering his shoulder, and he'll get a gain of four, as that will probably be the final play before we hit the two-minute warning. Mm -hmm. And it's a smart uh, clock play management here by Mexico City. Even if they let one more play go off, I still am fine with how they are letting this clock wind down, especially since they are in the lead. And they will run one more play. That goes to Morrison and he gets maybe a couple on that play as that will bring us to the two minute warning seven to three the score Mexico City on top by four over Alamo City in a fight for playoff positioning you're watching the simulation football league presented by APM music live on YouTube Eric Vincent alongside Alex West in the broadcast booth, Ron Haynes and Luke Schreiner in the stat truck for us this evening. Both teams sitting at five and five and fighting for their playoff lives. Larry Love, backup quarterback, in trouble, he's gonna go down. Alamo City has been sending the pressure ever since they knocked Sipe out of the game and they get another sack. Robert Thump and Jubu McSlim both getting in on the fun. And it's just a real troublesome situation for the Mexico City Aztecs line who are just, they're seeing these multi these multifaceted blitzes where the defenders are coming in the A gap and the B gap. They're just shooting all the way around the outside. It's coming from multiple angles and it's hard to know exactly where to defend. With the clock running, Blackwater is going to nail the field goal to make it a seven point game. Just under 90 seconds to go. And that makes it a seven point advantage for the Aztecs. With their backup quarterback against all odds, uh, they are looking strong so far. But uh, man, that Alamo City defense has been throwing everything they can at Larry Love. For sure. And it's been proving to be overall, I think, a, to a great success uh, when you consider how well Mexico City was moving the ball earlier. 
uh, this was definitely one of those big stops. Return by Hronick brings it out to the 24-yard line, minute 26 to go. Both teams with all three timeouts, so certainly some time on the clock to work with to get into scoring range. And, uh, I mean, man, but wouldn't it be great if Alamo City could put a touchdown on the board and go in with it being a tie score at the half of them? Oh, there's nothing I'd love more than a tie game going into half. I, I, I live for t close games. I haven't gotten to call many, but this is feeling like one of them could be. It is looking that way so far. Fennec in trouble, shuffles out of the pocket. He's going to run, lowers his shoulder, doesn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. It will go down as a sack, but a loss of one on the play. And what can you say other than just a great job by number 98 there, who is able to successfully read Ace Fennec's intention to try and get out there. That's the eighth sack we've seen to, so far in this game tonight. Maurice Floyd with just a stupendous job going from zone coverage to basically run defense. So a sack and an interception now for Lloyd this evening as uh, Calia makes the catch there right around the 30-yard line, gets close to the line to gain. Clock is continuing to roll. I feel like I'd call a timeout here. I would as well. I'm a little perplexed as to why neither team is really calling a timeout. Kind of. I'd, I'd want to have. I'd want. If I'm Alamo City here, I want to equalize. Toss goes to Jones, trying to bounce it outside. Mexico City ready for it, but Jones moving his legs gets the first down yardage and moves the sticks. But they're still not calling that timeout. Looks like they're going to go ahead and accept going into the half. As it is, they probably don't want to turn the ball over, especially not in this kind of field position. Give Mexico City one more chance to take a shot deep. Benick going to check it down. Garrison blew the tight end with the catch, and he is tackled in bounds, and that is going to bring us to the end of the first half. Mexico City with a 10-3 advantage over Alamo City. Here in San Antonio, a very, very quick first half and a very rough and tumble first half. We had eight total sacks between these two teams in that opening half, and it was a very entertaining uh, play out on the field by both teams so far. Uh, what did you think uh, about the uh, first and second quarter there, Alex? Honestly, we've had a delightfully chippy game. Both defenses came to play, and it's not like these offenses have not been moving the ball. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. They have both quarterbacks, or I should say all three quarterbacks have seen some deep balls. And the simple truth is that the run game for both squads hasn't really been there. These defenses have done a great job of swallowing up most attempts to get positive yards on the ground. So it is a duel through the air. Mexico City's really hoping they see Jordan Sype come back. If not, then you gotta be thinking that part of the reason why Greg Soto was so conservative with his play calling to end that first half is because he's counting on his Alamo City artillery to outpace the Aztec offense here in the second half. And if we are still down one Jordan site for the rest of this game, he could be he could be right. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. Both of these quarterbacks, like you said, all three of these quarterbacks throwing the football through the air, haven't seen a whole lot of the run game from either side as we get a look and see what the injury update is for Jordan Sipe. He has dislocated his finger. He is questionable to return for this evening's ball game. So we'll keep a close eye out for Sipe. Mexico City going to get the football to start things off here in the second half. So we very well may see number one back out there for the red and green. Fingers crossed, just not the dislocated one. <laughs> I see what you did there. Fielded inside the five. And that's going to be Jeffrey Daggs bringing it out to about the 25-yard line. Three Hall of Famers on this roster for Mexico City, by the way. Ray Bentley, the running back. Jeffrey Daggs, the return man there who plays safety. And Max Jackson, who uh, is also playing safety as well. Yeah, something to note about this Mexico City defense, there's a lot of very decorated players on this defensive squad and and more than and four all offensive all-stars as well. 
So Love's still out there. He's going to throw to Terrazas, who can't make the catch. That falls incomplete, brings up second down. Love coming out with an offset eye. He sends Van Dam in motion out to the line there. Delayed handoff goes to Bentley, and Alamo City was ready for that right up the middle as Joe Boo McSlim gets in there and makes the stop. He's had a sack and a couple TFLs already. As we mentioned, eight total sacks between both these teams, Alex. Mm -hmm. And there's just it feels like both defensive lines are just getting better push compared to their offensive compatriots for both squads. Love on third down, retreats, fires, catches made by Bartley as he gets into Alamo City near the 40-yard line. What a play there by Larry Love to Jason Bartley. And that is a great read by Larry Love, who did have Bo Martin Jr., the cornerback, basically unblocked, coming screaming his direction from the strong side. So he turns his head to the left side of the field, looking for where coverage is going to be weaker because you've got to pull some of the safety coverage over to that right side to make up for the corner blitz. He's able to see the one-on-one -on -one matchup and delivers a strike. Back to the ground game. Morrison with the carry gets stood up after a short gain of about three. They'll give him credit for four on the forward progress. Brings up second down. So we've got a second. This is a drive that is marching, but these two teams, I just want to note something. This game is so chippy, I think, because these teams have met 19 times. There is no love lost. Mexico City's won six. Alamo's got 13. Bentley with the stiff arm, able to bounce it to the outside, and he gets first down yardage before he's ushered out of bounds just past the 30-yard line. What a wily move by the Hall of Fame running back. And he is stepping up when his team needs him most, right? This is one of those situations where you can't always count on the passing attack, especially since your number one guy is not on the field right now. So the Hall of Famer putting the team on his back a little bit there trying to trying to make an impact they officially mark it at the 28 i formation love quickly throws tip ball and incomplete he was looking for terrazas on the play but a good play by rub for four acre to knock the football down second and 10 relatively short field i think you can still take a deep shot or two because it's not that squished but this is an important play call. Alamo City showing blitz. They will send the heat. Love is going to get it right in the back. Down he goes once again, and Alamo City continuing to feast on this Mexico City offensive line. And look at how creative these blitz packages are that you're able to see the defensive end, Stephen Fellows, completely unblocked as he beelines to the QB for his, looks like his second sack of the night. Third and law now for the Aztecs. Love. Looking, fires, tipped and incomplete. He was looking for Henry along the far sideline. And that is going to be a fourth down for Mexico City and another field goal try. It's long, but it's makeable if you trust your kicker. I don't know what the wind is in the f is like here in the stadium tonight, but I wouldn't expect it to be still. 46-yard attempt for Blackwater as he is able to sneak it into the right upright. And that is up and good. 13-3 to now the score. Mexico City able to keep themselves above water, maintaining the lead despite having a backup quarterback in there. And you want to know what I want to give the credit to? Like, the offense did move the ball forward successfully, but they had such a short field because, of, A, of how lucky the bounce was on that punt and how quickly they were able to force a punt out of Alamo City to give themselves short field position. Great job by the special teams and the defensive unit to make that score a lot easier for the offense and make it a two-possession game. 
it's been an overall great job, as you said, uh, of Mexico City just playing team ball and making sure that, you know, they, they rally the troops and they make sure that they can get the job done. So far, they are doing so up to possessions on the road, by the way, against the tough Alamo City team. Fennick going to roll out a little shovel pass there as he was looking for Jones, and that falls incomplete. Looks like just a little bit of miscommunication on exactly when that shovel should be coming out. And uh, I don't know about a shovel pass behind the line whenever Mexico City is sending the kind of pressure they are. That looked a little bit uh, dangerous, even if he makes that catch. Aztecs send the blitz. Jones on the carry. Good run by Brad Jones. As he'll get 10, it'll be third and very, very short near the 30-yard line. And finally, they get a run that's uh, longer than Tony Mo or than Yeo Montana's one five-yard ru rush. That was their longest running play until Brad Jones just now. Third and short, Mexico City showing blitz, trying to bounce to the outside, and Storm is going to go nowhere. Rainstorm was trying to get the edge, and Mexico City said, "No, sir." Max Jackson, the Hall of Famer, knocks him dead in his tracks. And Max Jackson, just something to note about this, about uh, how decorated this defense has been. Max Jackson is actually is actually tied for third in how many interceptions he's got. He's got six so far this season, tied for third as far as the season leaders. And he's only three interceptions behind all-time leading interception leader, Eddie Gage. No return on the punt. 38-yard line is where they will mark it. The 2024 SFL convention is heading to South Shore Harbor Resort in League City, Texas, just south of Houston, July 12th to the 14th, featuring live games, flag football, a golf tournament, tailgate, pool party, and more. For all the convention details, visit simulationfl.net slash news slash convention to reserve your room, see the event schedule, and more. Love still in the ball game as he hands it off to Bentley for a short game there. And it just feels like most of these runs aren't really going anywhere, right? The, it feels like the pass is where it's at if you want to have meaningful success on any of these offensive drives so far. Bentley, again with the carry and again goes absolutely nowhere. Bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be no game. Third and long now. Tough situation to be in for a backup quarterback. Love has played admirably. Three of five for 61 yards so far. Boos are showering down from the home crowd. Love in trouble. He's going to go down. Basically sent him up on a tee, and Robert Thump brought out the big stick and whacked him 300 yards down the middle of the fairway. Robert Thump is showing. <coughs> excuse me, exactly how to be a fast force on the outside. He's getting to the quarterback again and again and again because of his dynamic speed, unusual for his size, just having himself a night. So another punt for Mexico City. Fair catch call for made right around the 20 yard line and we will send it over to SFL HQ for another game update. Commissioner Cameron Irvine, Cam. Thank you, Eric. Arizona's playoff hopes slipping away as Bismarck Wright fumbles, and look at that. Sometimes the ball just bounces your way. Guy Incognito with the fumble six. Houston's up 28-10 with seven and a half to go. Back to you. Thank you, Cam. Very talented little spin move there. As soon as the ball just bounced right into his arms, what a play there as Houston taking control in that ball game. Over here, Alamo City trying to keep themselves in this one as Brad Jones gets a good carry of about eight on that play. Speaking of nifty little spin moves, put a defender in the Washington machine right there. Whoop. Just about five minutes to go here in the third. Mexico, Mexico City showing blitz. 
Brainstorm trying to bounce it to the outside. Jackson again ready for him. He got a TFL on the last possession, and he just about gets another one here. Stops him short, though. And what a big stop by Jackson there, right? This is one where now you're practically forced into a run play and with how these defenses have been I would not be surprised if they got enough push to shut it down here more blitz Kronik hurdles the defender and is able to get just enough for the first down as Alamo City keeps the drive going another wide receiver lines up in the backfield to give some extra rest to this tandem duo of Jones and Storm. Fennec with time looking, checks it down and a good play there by Jackson, able to wrap him up behind the line for a loss. And Dexter Jackson is just having himself a season also as far as being uh, one of the best tacklers in the SFL. He is the leading tackler for this Mexico City Aztec team and is the beating heart of the center line defense, I would say. Well, it's coming. Fennec fires it quickly, and the catch was made, but jarred loose. Violent hit on the back end by the Mexico City secondary. Gerard Brody and company in there. And let's just see this. Oh, I was hoping for a replay of that one. That was going to be a beautiful hit to actually get a replay of, but I understand we've got to keep the action moving third and long. I think we need to see either a deep comeback route or a crossing route that gets past the sticks before it breaks. Both these teams have struggled along the front line to protect their quarterbacks. We'll see what happens here on this third and long situation. I don't think Mexico City is going to be sending any pressure, so Fennec might be able to complete it. Pressure is sent, but it's checked down anyway. No tackle made. He wasn't touched down, and it is still going to be short of the line to gain as Jackson finally makes the stop on Hronik. And man, you got you got to start wondering a little bit almost what is going on with this Alamo City offense? Why are they failing to get consistent first downs and move the ball in the scoring position in this in this uh, in basically since the first quarter they haven't really done much of anything to threaten a score. Flag on the play as Morrison brings it up close to the 30-yard line. And they're going to get a clipping call here against Mexico City that will back them up to about the 15-yard line. Luck break from Alamo City here. Their defense is now going to have a bit more threat, especially if they can get a sack early. They can pin Mexico City way deep in their own territory. So from the 15, 3.03 to go here in the third. Still no Jordan Sype. As Larry Love, the backup, still in. I formation for Love. Alamo City showing pressure, but they don't send it. Bentley with the carry, and he'll bring it out for a short gain of three, second down. And I don't know about you, Eric, but this has been... Uh, defensive showcase. The, look at the over/under. We're expecting 48 and a half points scored so far this game. We're only at 16 with a little over two minutes left in the third. Both defenses have put on an absolute clinic tonight, and it just feels like Mexico City's offense has been a little better. Well, I'm going to check it down to Terrazas, who is able to make the catch and get close to the line to gain. It's going to be a third and short. Terrazas and Love seem to have a nice little connection there. Uh, I wonder if maybe they've been working with the second unit a little bit more. Maybe that's the connection they've got. You got to think, you know, it's something like that. Here comes the pressure. Pitch goes to Bentley, trying to bounce to the outside. He dives forward. He does get the first down. The Hall of Famer said enough is enough, and he's going to move those sticks for Mexico City. Indeed, and that's one of those that you just you got to hope your guy makes it, and he sure made it there. It took extra effort. You put your body on the line for these kind of moments, and he re is rewarded with a fresh set of downs. 
Back to Bentley. Shifts it up the middle, and he gets a couple on the play as Bogey Barr was clogging that lane there for a short game. The Aztecs in and out of the huddle quickly as they are back up to the line. Alma City sending pressure, and they're going to get there again. Bogey Barr with the sack, and Love is just beside himself. Cannot stay upright for longer than maybe a couple seconds on some plays. And, you know, it's starting to feel like we understand now why Jordan Seip isn't in this game right now because that is the eighth sack, by my count, or the eighth sack as a unit that this uh, Alamo City defense has. Two players with mul or three players with multiple sacks tonight. Absolutely unreal performance by the artillery defense. And they are going to continue to send pressure, and Love is going to go down again. Nine sacks allowed, this time from the safety. Jukin and Rukin just, Jr. comes in and gets in there. It's just from all possible angles, from all possible directions, and they are finding out that this Mexico City offensive line just they look gassed already or they look a little lost you know get it together but at the same time mexico city still has a 10-point lead what's happening just a baffling game as both of these teams playing impressive defense but neither team really playing their best offense that we know that they are capable of playing despite mexico city having a 10-point advantage here Mm -hmm. Let's take a second and just talk about some bizarro world stats for a moment. Ace Fennec came into this game. He's the leader in league completion percentage. Tonight, he's even doing better than his average. He's 14 of 18, but he has no touchdowns. Fennec on the rollout. Has protection. Again, checks it down to Garrison Blue, who doesn't get much. Gets maybe a couple. I'm not certain if maybe it's just great coverage on the back end or what Fennec is seeing, but he is not taking those chances down the field that we are used to seeing from him. Not since that one pickoff, and by you guess who, we can see it right there. Mark, we see the highlight on Maurice Lloyd, who has the one interception. Fennec, pressure from the backside, able to complete it to Kalia, who does get enough for the first down, and that is going to bring us to the end of three. It's been a back and forth ball game between both of these teams. Big hit there by Brody to close things out. And Mexico City up 13 to three over Alamo City as we round into the fourth. Get your fours up in the chat. We will hit you up and read you with your rights here in just a moment, courtesy of Chris Curtis. Nation of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. One quarter to go. Ten-point advantage for Mexico City. Eric Vincent alongside Alex West. Ron Haynes and Luke Schreiner in the stat truck for us this evening. First and 10 for Alamo City at about the 45 yard line. Handoff goes to Jones, who gets tackled right away. No gain on the play, brings up second down. APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state of the art technology, and world class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects, visit apmmusic.com. Big catch there by Ziggy Gronek in traffic, able to move the sticks for the artillery. And is that a one-handed catch? What, just look at that post route, how he breaks it. Now he does able to corral that one. And just a big moment in traffic where Gerard Brody is able to actually make the hit, doesn't able, isn't able to make the play on the ball there, and you, you think he's chicken himself a little bit for allowing that one to go through. Yeah, just able to snatch that one over Brody as Storm gets the carry there. Has not had a ton of success on the ground here tonight, and you could sense some of the frustration there from Rain Storm. 
and it's been a hard night for everyone who's been running the football. Neither offense has really had success on the ground. Just to take a look at the numbers, it's 38 rushing yards for Mexico City and 33 rushing yards for Alamo City. It has not been the night to try and push in the trenches. They're going to try and run it again. Jones with his best run of the evening. First down yardage and more as he gets to the 30-yard line. Good run there by Brad Jones. And that's our first run of the entire night that actually picks up enough yardage to go for a first down on its own. We have not had a run that has gone for 10 plus yards until finally Brad Jones makes one by getting not one, not just one broken tackle, but also getting some extra yards after contact whenever he was going down to really cross the threshold. Bennick will roll out on first down. Fires into traffic, incomplete. A leaping effort made by the Mexico City secondary. Liam Ryan, the corner, almost got the pick. A moment where the home crowd just uh, kind of sucks in, sucks in there and gasps. <gasps> you know, you feel the blood pressure and you feel the collective blood pressure in the stadium rise if you. Well, especially after that pick made by Maurice Lloyd to start the football game off, and that basically sees the momentum for the Aztecs as Jones will get the carry here for a gain of four, bringing up third down. And it really kind of feels like that early pick has taken a little bit of the teeth out of this Alamo City's attempts to throw the ball deep, except for the occasional play. We'll see what they do on third down here. Fennec. With time, uncorks it, over the middle, another pick! Itera going back the other way for Mexico City, and another huge turnover made by the Mexico City defense, keeping them in the game. And what a swing, right? The home city, or the home crowd is not happy about that decision there. Just a rough, rough throw. The receiver was not alone. The He was completely bracketed. Merrick Itera all over him, the former Las Vegas Fury, showing off why he is a four-time All-Star there. Jordan Seid back in the game for Mexico City. Just in time. Suffered a dislocated finger early on in the game. Haven't seen him since the second quarter of play. Saip trying to do a little shovel pass there. That goes absolutely nowhere other than maybe the butt of his offensive lineman. We've seen the butt fumble. Maybe that was the butt pass on that one. Either way, it brings up second down. Saip. Throws Henry with the catch. First down out across the 30 yard line. That'll move the sticks for Mexico City. And just like that, moving the football down the field. And that's not the first time we've seen Jordan Sight make that pass tonight. It's a quick timing route. It's a very simple AB question Is someone guarding where Bill Henry is going? No. Fit the ball behind the behind the linebacker because if it's man coverage you can't make that pass but it's zone coverage the linebacker hasn't moved to cover yet beautiful throw and catch clock rolling Aztecs with a 10 point advantage Sai hands it off to Bentley Finds his way through the sea of humanity behind the line, but only gets maybe a half a yard. Now, if you're in this situation, do you think that you're calling a pass play here on second and long? I Probably think I not am. at this point. I mean, not for me. I would want to chew up as much clock as humanly possible and keep my quarterback from getting killed. Bentley with the carry there gets maybe a half a yard or so that'll bring up third and eight. You know, that it, is it, fair point. It, it is tough to call though, honestly. I mean, it's easy for us sitting up here in the booth, you know, playing armchair quarterback, but in actuality, it's very, very difficult to game plan week in and week out for these teams. For sure. 
Third and long for sight. Pressure coming. Shuffles, fires. Catch made, but incomplete. A flag is on the field. I'm curious as to what they're going to call on this one. Oh, roughing the passer is what they're going to call. And Mexico City is going to get a fresh set of downs as a result. Let's get a look. And this right here, that pass is well and away. You cannot Ooh. be delivering a hit that late after the ball is already out. You know that Ron Hopp is getting an absolute earful on the sideline right now. Yeah, that is something that you absolutely cannot do in this type of situation. Sipe on first down, throws a low ball there, caught by, made by, or excuse me, catch made by Bartley for a gain of seven. Just to give you a quick game update over on the other channel. It looks like Houston has defeated Arizona, so the Headhunters will be in the playoffs, and the Arizona Scorpions will not. They have been eliminated. And off goes to Bentley, who can't get out of the backfield. It's going to bring up a third and five. Alamo City still continuing to wreak havoc in that backfield. And they're standing strong on a lots of these run plays, right? Look at the extra effort that's being put by the entire line. And you're seeing some creative, uh, some creative angles, some extra effort plays by these linebackers and, and corners who are trying to make everyone in that backfield uncomfortable. Let's see what Alamo City does on defense here. Third and five. They've been sending a ton of pressure. They're going to send it here. Sipe, a little bit of time. Throws and cannot make the catch. Bartley, I believe, had a step. Just couldn't reel it in. Brings up fourth down. And that's one that stings, right? You think that if Mexico City is converting that, they're within, they're almost within field goal range. They're likely to put more points on the board. And if it's a touchdown, that feels like an almost insurmountable lead. Instead, ACA still has a chance, but no matter what, they, it feels like they've got to score here, and it really needs to be a touchdown if you can. So on the punt, fair catch call for and made at the 15-yard line with 5.08 to go, and Alamo City down by 10. Join Cam and Tyler for SFL this week, Monday at 7.15 p.m. Eastern before tomorrow's big rivalry game between Indianapolis and Minnesota with major playoff implications. Kickoff is going to be at 8.15 Eastern time on SFL YouTube as we get a look at Fennec's numbers here of the last 10. Six of 10, but the last pass being that key interception there. Even if Mexico City didn't score as a result, uh, some costly time has run off the clock. And Jones is going to get the pitch play there. Somehow stays on his feet. He's still going to lose a yard. And I just need to really talk about something for a second about this Alamo City offense. They are struggling to move the ball in part because their run game is toothless. And the deep ball from Ace Fennec has basically disappeared. They Alamo City has thrown for more yards in the first quarter than the other three quarters combined that's an impressive stat there and an impressive job by mexico city then it throws tight window there but the catch is made that's going to be a first down good pitch and catch and uh, that was hank girl troll uh number 88 the tight end making that catch there mm -hmm. and that's just a beautiful pass that's a good route and it's a great job by the tight end to keep his body in between the ball and and the defender not allowing any chance for mexico city to get another takeaway here and off jones slips jackson but dags is able to make the stop right around the 30 yard line after a short gain of three clock continuing to roll under four minutes to go Alamo City has got to start putting their foot on the gas, I believe. For sure, I agree. I would want to see a hurry up soon. You're down two scores, not one. Yeah, you have all three timeouts, but you cannot be dilly-dallying around whenever your playoff hopes are on the line. And off this time to Montana, who goes absolutely nowhere. Now they're going to go no huddle on a third and six. Obvious passing down. 
Fennec to throw, sidearms it into coverage, incomplete. Max Jackson was tracking it, just couldn't quite reel in the ricochet, and that brings up fourth down. And that's twice now that we've seen uh, throws go right at, basically, or in the zip code of Max Jackson once he's made a solo tackle against the tight end earlier, and now he almost comes up with a pick off the ricochet. Dangerous stuff. Fourth down, four wide for Alamo City. Fennec lofts one, catches made, and it is going to be a first down just by the skin of their teeth. And Mexico City's going to challenge it. Oh, boy. We're going to get a look under the hood and get a retroactive look at the play presented by Retroid. Get your SFL console at GoRetroid.com. And this feels like do or die, right? This is spot of the ball. Where did he get it? Where is forward progress going to be counted? I, I don't know. Oh. I, oh, it's going to be close. I, I we need the sideline angle. Seeing oh. it in real time, it was so oh, close. No. I don't think he got it. I think he caught the ball short of the line again, and the ball didn't travel far enough. And yep, Mexico City is. will not be charged the timeouts. The call is going to be overturned. We will see if that means that they're going to give the ball to Mexico City on downs, and they will. With a very short field, too. That almost feels like a nail in the coffin. Now, the defense can stand very tall here and only allow a field goal or even force a turnover and give this offense a, a new life. We'll see how the artillery on defense respond. Sipe shuffles, throws, catch. No, intercepted. What a play there by Alamo City on defense to take it away. Number 22, Albert Begin making a clutch takeaway. Just when you need him most, the song safety comes up and snags one off of Navante Richardson, giving Bill Henry a chance to rest on that outside route there on the strong side. But, oh my goodness, Alamo City really has, it's almost like the last drive didn't happen except for a little bit of loss of clock. What? That was absolutely bonkers. I did not believe that that was an interception for the longest time. Had to watch it slow-mo to actually figure out what had happened. Great play by Begin. Fennec tosses it down to Blue, lowers his shoulder, trying to get as much yardage as possible. Gets about four, and Alamo City going to go no huddle again. Play action. Fennec fires. Near side like Defensive player of the year from last season, Dexter Jackson with the interception. And that one, maybe, might just about do. I can't even see, I can't even uh, totally put the chance of an Alamo City turnover again away because this is back and forth and back and forth. It's not going to be over until I think it's a 10-point game with under a minute left on the clock. But so now it's just about can Mexico City widen this score now that they've just been gifted another golden chance to put this game to bed. Can they do it? I mean, at this point, you got to run the football. Do not throw the football at this point. In time. Do just not. run it. Handoff. Bentley gets suplexed right at the line of scrimmage there by Jay Mart. And that's going to roll the clock, which is. Most importantly, what Mexico City wants at this point. For sure. They're going to they're gonna take this as far as they can. They're going to snap one more run play to run it all the way down to the two-minute warning. They'll take a third in whatever this run play leaves them with in order to just eke off, at, eke off as much clock as possible. Got to run one more here, and then that will probably bring us to the two-minute warning. Handoff, Bentley trying to find some room, gets past the 30 to about the 29. Going to bring up third and five, and that will bring us to the two-minute warning here in the fourth. And 13 you know what else? to three is the score. Mexico City on top by 10. 
as you're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music live on YouTube. Unless I got a little too eager to say this, but that's just such a big run by Bentley to make this a very makeable third down. As long as they don't lose yardage, this is also a field goal range. And nothing is a given. I, I will say that uh, just watching this evening's ball as Bentley does not get the first down. Alamo City going to call their first time out. There's going to be two remaining for them. And, and it's just been a bonkers affair here in San Antonio. Eric Vincent alongside Alex West, Ron Haynes and Luke Schreiner in the stats truck for us this evening. Both these teams at five and five trying to get into the playoffs, fighting tooth and nail here as Mexico City lining up for a field goal to make it a 16 to three game. And it is no good. What is happening right now? Nothing is certain. Nothing is guaranteed. Everything is up for grabs and that is wide left. What on earth is happening? The Mexico City Aztecs have been averaging over 28 points a game this season, and they haven't even managed two touchdowns here. Alamo City, averaging 20, a little over 22 points a game, hasn't scored a single touchdown yet. Fennec, the throw into traffic, incomplete. That'll stop the clock at 147. Alamo City with two timeouts. A sweet mother of pearl. I mean, what, what what more could you ask for from a ball game? Both of these defenses surely ate their Wheaties and came to play in the biggest ways tonight because it's not even that Ace has had a bad day per se. Outside of some rough sacks and some interceptions that he's thrown, these numbers should have resulted in some touchdowns, but it just hasn't been so. There's definitely been some rough sacks tonight. Fennec. Checking it down to Brad Jones, who cannot come up with it. Brings up third and long. Clock still frozen, now at 144. And this is now truly do or die. The home audience can feel it, and you know number 12 is feeling it. He's got to get this first down. Four wide, single back. Hendricks goes in motion. Fennec fires it quickly into traffic, incomplete. Fourth down now, and it's pretty much the ball game at this point. Well, it's it feels like four down territory too. I don't think that Alamo City is going to punt. It doesn't matter if you're buried deep in your own end, in your own side of the field at this point. So what? You if you don't score, it's over. And just a crazy turn of events as you look at the last ten passes thrown by Fennec. He was absolutely on the money in the first quarter of play and since then he has just fallen off a cliff productivity wise mm -hmm. it feels like Alamo city has gotten truly one-dimensional and mexico city made the adjustments necessary play action fennec sets his feet fires over the middle incomplete mexico city with another four down stop and they are going to get the football with 135 to go and no flag on that one. That's a tough hit. The ball is coming in, but it's clean. And what a shot by Max Jackson, the 10-time All-Star and the former Las Vegas Fury who just has put on a clinic so far this season with interceptions and has been flying all over the place with clutch tackle after clutch tackle to prevent big plays by Alamo City. All Mexico City has to do is just run the clock out here by running the football as Bentley is going to get the toss. He will run it out past the 30-yard line, and Alamo City is going to burn their second time out. All right. So I guess let's talk the future. It looks like we know where this game is going to go. Let's just, barring a miracle comeback by Alamo City, which is still possible how with how low scoring this game has been, Mexico City can clinch playoff win but they have to go through the 6-5 and five Vancouver Legion next week. That's going to be a tough one. That is indeed going to be a tough one. You, you never know what you're going to get 
from Andy Hamilton's squad up there in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, that, that'll definitely be a tough ball game to get through in order to get to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where, you know, if Alamo City were able to defend home turf here, if they were able to win this game, they would have a much easier task of getting to seven wins by trying to go through the two and nine Los Angeles Lycans. Not that upsets don't happen, but you'd think that you would rather be seeing uh, LA rather than trying to beat Vancouver to try and, you know, win or, win or lose, your, your fate is in your hands. Yep, most definitely. And and for Alamo City, it's it's just been that kind of season for them, unfortunately. Very, very tough schedule, top 10 schedule in the league. And, you know, they've won the games that they're supposed to win on paper, but all the tougher games, they just haven't quite come out and played the football that we know for that they, they are capable of playing. So, uh, unfortunately for them, that's going to drop them to five and six, and it's going to be a tough road for them to get into the playoffs with just one week to go. It's not it's not necessarily one of those things that is uh, easy to say, but, you know, you want to bounce back from losses with wins, but Alamo City has struggled with that. They've been very streaky. They've gotten two wins in a row, then it's four losses, then they get – one win, they make that three wins in a row. Then they have a loss last week to Tulsa. They follow up with another loss here. And it's just one of those things where even a bounce back win in week 14 does not give you a playoff spot. So one last knee here and Mexico City secures the victory on the road against a tough artillery team in a hostile environment. Playoff implications are involved and they come out on top moving to six and five with one week to go and alamo city will fall to five and six as you mentioned mexico city got vancouver in canada coming up next week with the playoffs on the line and uh la is going to be playing host to the artillery uh, coming up next week Well, it's been an exciting game and an absolute pleasure to call it with you, my friend. And uh, I believe our first call ever together, Eric, but it's been a joy. Who's been your player of the game? Uh, shoot. Uh, it, it is very difficult to pick a singular player of the game. Um, I mean, the, the, the defense for both of these teams played absolutely lights out. Like, it was just unbelievable the type of defensive showing that we got from both of these teams here today. But I, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Maurice Lloyd. The early interception early on, she flipped the momentum in favor of the Aztecs. I ended up getting a sack later on. Just a very nice complete game from her and just off the right out the gate, did a nice job. Definitely one of those tone setters. I, I can understand that. Mine has to be Dexter Jackson, who was flying all over the field, got an interception of his own got three tackles for losses was a force to behold in the run and the pass well on behalf of alex west my name is eric vinson want to thank ron haynes and luke schreiner in the stats truck for us this evening thank you for tuning in to this presentation of the simulation football league and good night